Section one. You will hear a male student talking to a union representative about placing an advertisement to sell a laptop. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories, if that's possible. The answer is advertisement. So, advertisement has been written in the space. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories, if that's possible. Sure, that's not a problem. I take it you are a member of the students' union. Yes, I am. Right then, I'll just get a form up, and as there is no one around and it looks as if it's going to be quiet for a while, I'll just type the details straight into the computer for you. Thanks very much. No problem. Shall we just title it "Laptop for Sale"? Yeah. Okay. Can you describe it generally? Well, it's in very good condition. In fact, it's hardly been used. Why are you selling it, if I may ask? Well, I've got another one which is much lighter, and I don't really need two. I see. What weight is the one you're selling? It's three point five kilograms. That is heavy these days. Can you give more details about the one you want to sell? Right.、Uh, well, it's an Allegro, and it's got all the latest programs. Okay. What about the memory? The memory is only 0.5 gigabytes. And what about the screen size and the other features? Oh well,、uh, the the screen is well, let's see, it's、uh, 37.5 centimeters with a standard size keyboard and a touchpad. But I've got a cordless mouse that I can put in with it if necessary. Well, some people don't like using a touchpad. What about ports or holes for attaching things to the laptop? It's got two ports.、Mm. More modern laptops have more than two ports for all the extra attachments. They do.、Uh, let's see、uh, what else is important.、Uh, oh yeah, the、uh, the battery lasts for two and a half hours, which is okay, but not enough for long train journeys.、Uh, but one thing is that it's not wireless. Right. Okay. Not wireless. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Anything else I can put on the advertisement? There's a webcam built at the top of the screen, and、uh, I can throw in a printer, a scanner, and headphones, which I, I got with it in a special deal. It also comes with its own case for carrying it around. Actually, the case is quite smart. I'm hoping these things will help it sell. They should do. Right, I think I've got all that. How much do you want for it? That I'm not sure about.、Uh, it's worth about nine hundred pounds to a thousand pounds new. Yeah, but you won't get that much if it's used, and even if it's in good condition. What about five hundred pounds? I doubt if you'd get as much as that. More like two hundred pounds or three hundred pounds. 
If you look at the notice board, there is one on there which is comparable to yours, and it's not more than about £250, I think. As little as that? I'm afraid so. Shall we say £300? OK, put that. Can I take some contact details for the advert? The name's David Bristow. B R I S T O W. Yes, that's it. And uh, a mobile or email? Both, if you want. It's D I B underscore 7791 at hotmail.com. OK. And the mobile? Uh, that's 09875 42 3387. That's it. If you send the picture, I'll add it and print it out and stick it up for you. OK. I can get that to you today. Right. I'll type in here, Advert placed the 22nd of October. Fine. And good luck with the sale. Thanks. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a talk at an open day at an alternative health club. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning and welcome to the open day of our new alternative health club here at Chelsea Bridge. I have to say it is very pleasant to have so many people turn up. My name is Harry Wilkinson and I work as one of the nine permanent staff members employed here at the club. The main aim of the open day is to give you a quick tour of the building. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to a few people employed at the club. Not all of us are here at the same time. In case you need to contact any of us, our contact details are here on the notice board below the photographs. First of all, this is Sean Bond, who is the technical manager, and his job is to supervise equipment like computers and all the electrical equipment. And this is Margaret Lloyd. Her main function is to oversee training, and she is therefore in charge of all the full and part-time therapists. The next important person I need to introduce you to is James Todd. He is our liaison officer. What he does is manage bookings for the club rooms and equipment as they are open to different organisations, from the local college to corporate clients like banks and so on. Last but not least is our physiotherapist, Edward Marks, who works part-time Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Edward plays an important part in the life of the club. His main role is to prevent injuries. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. Now for the various amenities. You see that the club has quite a large capacity and is arranged over three floors. There is a lift by the reception and the stairs. On the ground floor, there are two large halls, which are used for yoga, tai chi, pilates, and dance and fitness classes for different age groups, with a shop and cafeteria over here. On the first floor, we have a full range of fitness machines, which are available in the large central hall, around which there are various offices. The changing rooms are also on this floor. On the second floor, there is a series of small therapy rooms with waiting areas for clients. These may be booked by individual therapists. There are also three classrooms, which are used for teacher training and group therapy classes. We have a very extensive therapy training program accredited to the University of Manwich, with training in counselling, for which we have three programmes at the moment. As regards the various types of yoga, acupuncture and the Alexander technique, there are currently nine different training classes going on. Information about the training can be obtained from the brochure, which you can pick up at reception and from the club website. There will be a chance to talk to trainers for those interested in counselling this Saturday at 10 a.m. For yoga, etc., there will also be an informal gathering of trainers on Thursday at 4.30 p.m. So, if you are interested in becoming involved, this is your chance. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a female and a male student talking to a female tutor about a self-evaluation form. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Now, Mark and Anna, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed your joint presentation on the application of robotics in a non-industrial setting to the group on the 2nd of December, and it is clear that you have both devoted quite a lot of time and effort to it. Have you had a chance to fill in the self-evaluation form for the session? Yeah, we have. So, Mark, what do you think overall? Well, generally, I felt the presentation worked very well. In fact, we seemed to hold the attention of the others throughout. And the pace of delivery was fairly even, as were the range of activities we organised. I agree with Mark, but I'm not sure we were comprehensive or academic enough. No comment, really, except that I don't think there was any question of it not being thorough. I think we were a bit too chatty and too jokey at times, rather than... Formal. OK, what do you think were the best areas? And which do you think can be improved on? Well, everything could have been improved on. I felt very good about the handouts. We'd spent a lot of time putting them together. They had a very professional appearance as we bound them into a booklet. To me, the handouts were the best part, as we had a very extensive bibliography and the booklet seemed to go down well. The booklet you did for the handouts certainly showed you had done a lot of work but I think that you put too much material into it and people got distracted by it. Perhaps you could have cut the handouts by about a third. I see. Well, when I come to think about it, maybe you're right. 
OK. But there were times in the middle of the presentation where things did go a bit astray. I think that was my fault when I got the PowerPoint slides out of sequence and I had difficulty getting back on track. Mm. I also think we rated our technical ability too highly, especially when operating under pressure. I had never done a presentation with technical equipment before, so it was a steep learning curve for me in particular. Yes, I think you could have done with a bit more practice with the equipment beforehand. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. What about the next item on the feedback form, the aims and objectives? I think they were very focused and we followed them through well, I think. We wanted to show how Europe was lagging behind other areas of the world. Yeah, I think they were clearly set out. Yes, agreed. No comment there. The diagrams and charts were appropriate. Yes, I have put that too. They did work well in helping to illustrate and break up the presentation by cutting down on the number of words and text on the screen. What about delivery? Well, I think our performance was average. It was difficult to coordinate speaking and presenting the material at the same time. I was quite self-conscious of what I was doing. It was down to a lack of experience. Unfortunately, both of you had the habit of standing in front of the projector, so you kept blocking the image on the screen. To me, this is the area that requires the most improvement. The section on the predictions of the commercial application in the future, I think, appeared a bit haphazard. Uh, to me, it was a weak point of the presentation. And I think that some of the slides could have had fewer words. And we could have done some fancy graphics with the words. If you had to give yourselves a mark overall, how much would you give out of ten? Six, maybe. I'd be happy with that. Though bits were probably nearer a seven. So I'd say a six. Anna, what do you think? I think for me it's perhaps a seven. OK. Did you find the task and the evaluation useful? I think... That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk on local businesses at a university business centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The subject of this evening's talk at the North Bank Business Centre is local businesses in the area surrounding the university and the benefit they bring to the employment prospects of people in the local area, especially young people at the beginning of their career. We established the centre in response to approaches from several business people in the area who had wanted to start up new businesses but who had not managed to find any help locally and did not know where to turn. 
Moreover, they had all, without exception, come up against enormous bureaucratic obstacles. We therefore invited them in as a group to meet the members of the department and the students. Stemming from that is the centre, which now focuses mainly but not exclusively on business startups. Just after the centre was set up, snapshot research conducted by the department over the telephone gave some startling results. The information about local businesses revealed that three out of every ten local business startups that we could collect information on had failed within the first six months, and another five had gone within the year, leaving only two. The most common reasons given for the business's closing were, first, high rents, which are 33% higher than the national average due to the area being very central, second, lack of knowledge about grants, basically because of ignorance about how to access them, and thirdly, a lack of business support, because they did not know where to obtain advice from. Since the centre came into existence three years ago, we have helped change this climate of failure. The current statistics show a remarkable turnaround in the fortunes of local businesses. And now, after a year, only two businesses close out of every ten, compared to eight before the centre was set up. Six local businesses are now taking part in a work placement and monitoring scheme, which is of mutual benefit to ourselves and the companies involved. O Foods, a small start-up company with nine employees involved in organic food and based at a local market, has one final year graduate doing a year-long study on improving the stock turnaround. This was a particular problem because the company found that they were losing sometimes up to 30% of their stock. Another startup is Innovations, which deals with producing video games. This company, which employs only five people, all under the age of 25, is receiving support in attracting business partners and achieving production targets. In the smaller business category, Sampson's Limited, a courier company which is interested in developing a taxi service, is being offered help with their business expansion plans. Another small niche company called Vintage Scooter, which specialises in revamping old scooters, is taking part in a product monitoring scheme, offering customer service up to a year after purchase to check the quality of their restoration. The first of the two medium-sized companies that the scheme is monitoring is Build Limited, which employs 47 people. A comparison of their products and services with other businesses in the area is being carried out by a researcher who is trying to support them in their efforts to extend the company's product range. The last company, Jones Systems, is perhaps the most interesting because it has been the victim of considerable personnel problems, which have been affecting the day-to-day -day operations of the company. And so, we are looking at conflict management and team building within the company. To sum up, advisors help the companies look at different business options and models apply for grants, deal with employment issues, systems creation, and also provide accommodation at the centre to help them start up. E-mentoring for fledgling businesses is also in operation for those who find it difficult to attend the centre personally. The programme is funded by grants from local authorities. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.